Now, we talked a bit about law school when providing an overview of this presentation. And we said, well, the quality of the law schools in any particular jurisdiction has a very important role to play in explaining the competitiveness of M&A advisors. And law school has a very important role to play in determining the extent to which legal complexity and differentiation affect an advisor's ability to score going out mandates. So those of you that are familiar with uh, statistics, you'll be familiar with the term covariate. This covariate, or this factor which affects how the other explanatory variables are impacting on advisory relationships, it's that law school quality which is serving as this covariate. Now let's step back away from all this crazy econometrics and think, well, what's the intuition behind this law school variable? How do law schools impact on legal quality differentiation and ultimately on an advisor's ability to score going out mandates? And we can give three examples of how law school quality might affect these factors. One factor might be through the law school's ability to affect the quality of laws in that jurisdiction. Law schools make lawyers. Law schools make advisors to parliaments or other rulemaking bodies. Now, the extent to which law schools are training better lawyers and advisors, that clearly filters out into better law. The second possible channel relates to the quality of the lawyers themselves who are involved in these M&A transactions. So thinking about uh, a Beijing company acquiring, again, this Mexico City company, if the lawyers in that transaction are very clever, they can make the deal cheaper and uh, more profitable for both sides of the transaction. But remember I said that there's lawyers everywhere in this transaction. Not only are there lawyers advising both sides of the transaction itself, they're actually advising the bankers involved in the transaction. So to the extent that differences in lawyer quality affect the probability of success and the value of that transaction, and to the extent that law school quality impacts on the quality of the lawyers involved in that transaction, then we know that law schools obviously have a role to play throughout this whole procedure. The third factor, of course, is not only on the quality of the lawyers themselves, but also on the quality of the advice being given all across the M&A transaction chain. We see, even intuitively, that law schools should play a very substantial role in the competitiveness of M&A advisors, as well as the jurisdiction in which those advisors are based. And our econometric evidence shows this as we illustrate through three figures you see in front of you. In figure 35, we show several variables that we analyzed when looking at the probability of a target company's advisor city matching the target uh, company city. So we're asking in this regression, well, what are the chances that an advisor is based in the same city as the client? And what we find is that when the law school in that city is really good, it's more likely that a company will choose an advisor in its own city rather than going out. When the financial law is relatively complex and rich and allowing for this very creative structuring of deals, it is more likely that a company will choose an advisor at home. And like I said, there's two measures of this potential complexity. And looking at both measures simultaneously, we see a differential impact. We see that complexity encourages local companies to choose local advisors, but similarity for its part actually encourages these companies to, to choose advisors outside the city. So you, do, you don't want an advisor 
that just has a very similar law to what you have at home, you need that law to actually be complex. Many pundits, academics, and businessmen, they say, well, look, you need to choose an advisor because their laws are very similar to your laws. Chinese companies are acquiring German companies. They're going to want a German advisor because their laws are very similar. But the data show that's not true. It's not the similarity in that law that's important. It's the actual complexity of that law which encourages companies to choose local advisors or not. And of course we see that when advisors work in an awesome international financial center, they're more likely to get business no matter where they are and no matter where their customer is. Turning our attention now to figure 36, this shows the probability that a going out acquirer or target chooses an elite advisor. And what we see here is that as the law school quality increases, the probability that the company is going to choose an elite advisor goes down. And that of course makes sense because when law firms at home are very good, you don't have to go outside to choose an advisor. You can choose one right at home. And similarly, when the quality of the International Financial Center is very high, then we expect to see this going out company or the target choose an elite law firm or banker. And that makes sense, of course, because International Financial Centers are often where these elite companies congregate. Turning our attention now to figure 38, this shows the number of other advisors that an advisor works with. So remember that on both sides of the transaction, you're going to have bankers, you're going to have lawyers. There'll often be coalitions of or consortia of these advisors working on both sides of the transaction. We ask, well, what determines the number of advisors working on a transaction? Now, unsurprisingly, deal value affects the number of advisors such that bigger deals require more advisors. Interestingly, the ranking of the economics or finance faculty in that jurisdiction relates positively with the number of advisors on a transaction. Because it's not clear why having better economics departments translates into having more advisors on a transaction. Right? On the one hand, it could be that these very good economics departments are creating a lot of controversial ideas and different ideas, and therefore they have to be lumped in through a large number of advisors onto a transaction. But it could just be the opposite effect. It could be that a good, high-ranked, economics faculty is actually not producing good advisors and therefore more advisors are needed. So there's two possible effects that could be at play and therefore we just don't talk about this effect anymore other than to note that it exists in the numbers. And what we see is that overall in the various panels that we run and across the analysis that finance departments and economics faculties in general have little impact on an IFC's ranking or on advisors abilities to go out and win going out mandates. Instead it's the law school that plays the determining role. 